Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Dark Chicken. Today, we're jumping back into some more All the Mod 7 to the Sky. Hope you guys are ready. So, I've been doing a little bit of research and looking for ways to process the ores that we are currently generating. And, well, things have been changed significantly. So, in this current pack at the moment, um, there's, a, there's a lot of ways that we can process ores but none of them are, let's say, great. <laughs> let's just put it that way. For example, you may think that thermal is a great way. You can go ahead and put it in the pulverizer and double ores, right? Well, no, uh, unless you have like actual ore, um, and I don't even know if that's the case. Uh, yeah, unless you have like actual ore, it's not gonna happen. This raw material, yeah, only gives you one with an additional chance of uh, 25%. Um, which can be increased by a little bit with some modifiers, but this is all you're going to get is, is, is one. And then that's going to be processed. I mean, honestly, at that point, you might as well just smelt it straight on, right? Um, so how do we go about duplicating? Well, you also might think that, I don't know, industrial foregoing, um, uh, because industrial has a way of making ore meat, right? Um, let's actually take a look at just all the mod and take a look at all the uh the ore recipes or just look at the uh the dust in general so we have all the ores right and for example this is like nickel right um and industrial foregoing may seem like the way to do it because normally it's like a five times not in this case this is only going to get you two times for the whole process of turning things into liquid meat and so on and so forth right and, and going from this process because it's only going to give you 100 millibuckets for a single ore piece, a uh, raw piece. So yeah, that's kind of out of the question, right? As well. Uh, so what is a good way to do this? Well, there is mechanism. Now the enrichment chamber basic recipe is gonna give you a 1.3 bonus. Uh, so for every ore is basically gonna be like 1.3 of an ore. Um, so yeah, every three, but th the problem with this recipe is it's gonna be pretty hard to maintain this and automate this without automating every ore in its own individual machine. Uh, Cause yeah, that's gonna cause some problems um, if we, for example, just don't have a raw piece of this material. Um, so I'd have to have one for each, uh, but I wanna be able to kind of process everything on through. So I was looking and of course the crusher is a good option, immersive engineering, but it's quite large. Uh, there's also the crushing wheel which is a really good option, honestly, from Create. Um, but I was thinking about this. Um, this is gonna give us the dust, um, and it should be pretty simple to set up, but it's also gonna allow us to get into this mod in FTB Industrial Contraptions, which is uh, a throwback, a throwback to uh, IC2. So if you're familiar with that mod, you're gonna be very familiar with this, um, this is basically what this mod is. It is old school IC2, which means it does have its own power, which we are going to get into today. So my goal is to have a macerator set up and hopefully get ore processing by the end of today. First things first though, there's gonna be a lot of auto crafting that is going to have to take place with uh, this FTB industrial contraptions. Um, almost all of the machines require a specific thing uh, the first thing we need to get set up, of course, is power, uh, but I am going to have to set up auto crafting for just about all these basic components. For one, industrial grade metal is going to be a smelting recipe, and I'm going to have to have a ton of that. And so I definitely want to be able to have a lot of these things on call for auto crafting at any moment, because um, a lot of these machines, like all of these circuits and, and so on, all these cables, uh, we're all going to need that. Now, rubber... This is, what is this, slime, latex? Is this just any slime ball smelted? If so, this is so nice. Oh, it is. So just any slime ball smelted. Man, what this, this is making this so, so easy for auto crafting. To be honest, this is all going to be a, a real blast from the past because it has been a long time since I have played with IC2. So let's go ahead and kick things off. Now, I have a bunch of auto crafts set up for this mod. Um, and, uh, one of the things I want to do is get power set up first, like I mentioned, and I think the geothermal generator is the way to go about doing that. So if I go ahead and make 
the geothermal generator. Go ahead, that should be the basic crafts here. <laughs> Go ahead and get those going. Actually, I think I missed making the batteries, but that's fine. Uh, so let's go ahead and craft that. There's an LV battery. Um, now, another thing is, uh, I don't know if this is the case, but I remember in the past that there was the potential for um, the uh, flux networks to be able to work with other power sources. So I don't know if that is the case in this. But uh, for right now, there we go. There's a basic generator. I think this receives coal uh, for the power. And it's kind of nice because this only generates 10 uh of the energy, right? It generates 10 of the power units. I don't know exactly what these power units are supposed to be called. Just call them 10 power. <laughs> um, but uh, the geothermal generates 20. So it's like the same as 20. And we should be able to easily get lava generating, especially enough that it can handle this. Um, so coal would go into a regular generator. This is going to go here. I'm also going to need some basic cables. Now, keep in mind, these can only accept 32. The thing with this mod is this block should break if you give it too much power. And if it is still the same as the old IC2, machines can go boom and explode. But be very careful when messing with these machines. Now, the machine that we're going to be using to, you know, duplicate ores is going to be the Macerator. Um, so this right here has a max input of 32 power units. And by default, its energy usage is only two. So this one geothermal generator should be plenty, plenty to handle most of the things we're going to have connected to it. Now, let's get this set up in the back here. I'm going to need um, some sort of thing to set this up. Thankfully, by the way, you don't have to have a wrench or anything crazy. Let's set this up back here. That gives us a little bit more space. And I'm going to set up our lava generation right here. Just to be nice and clean with this setup, I'm going to place a fluid pipe. And then we'll place this on top. Turn this over. We don't even have to configure it or anything. And there we go. Power should be generating here. And all we got to do to connect the power is run these beautiful cables over here. Now this has power. So let's take, for example, this out. And let's just see how fast it is on its own. Because I know on its own, it's going to be pretty slow. Now, I remember really old school versions of this. If you gave it a redstone signal, it would over time get faster and faster, which it actually looks like it is getting faster and faster. And I remember back back in the day, if you use like a red stone torch, um, you can actually have it maintain its speed. But I don't think that's uh, that's the case anymore. Because like if it's going fast right now, if I pull this out and restart, it's probably going to no, that is the same pace. Nope, that's the same pace. I don't think this actually speeds up any at all like it used to in the uh, you know, the olden times, which I really miss. That was that was always a fun mechanic. Next, of course, on the list of things I want is going to be the powered furnace. And this can technically go next to this. Now, this is not the uh, the ideal order. The ideal order is, of course, to feed items from the top and then have this fed items. But if they did this correct, we should have some upgrades that we can start working towards that I think allow us to configure the sides. Um, there's an eject upgrade. And I think this will allow us to eject the items that are received here and spit them into this machine over here. But... We have to make these upgrades. This one actually doesn't look too difficult to make. It just requires a piston. And let's see if this works. So this will be an eject upgrade. Does that mean it is going to send it over there? I don't see anything happening or any menu that lets me configure anything. Man, you got to really love the way this works. Okay, actually, I think I spoke too soon. Because it does look like the ejector upgrade is ejecting it over here. We just had to give this power. Okay, so it is all working, as you can see. Now, to speed this up, uh, it, that's when things start to become a little bit uh, a little bit harder to do. Um, so, on the upgrades, the only way to speed this up is by putting overclocker upgrades in here. Overclockers are going to require some cells that uh, require us to fill with water. 
And we can do that by, uh, I think just right clicking an empty cell on it, but we have to make these coolant cells. And that'll make overclockers, right? Um, but overclockers come with a problem. It's going to increase the amount of power that's needed. And to increase these machines, there's a tier system in this. So remember it was like 32 power was the max on this. The only way to increase that, to change it, I think is by putting the energy upgrades. So there's energy store upgrades and there's also transformer upgrades. Transformer upgrades are basically going to allow it to accept more power uh, without blowing up. So we are we're also gonna need transformer upgrades and switch to MV and we're, we'll have to feed this more power to get this going faster. This, this mod is going to take a little bit of time to get used to. It's been a long time. So let's make some overclockers. Now to up to turn these, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I can, like what exactly could I use to automatically fill these up? It doesn't really show in JEI. And I don't remember if there was a machine. I know there's a canning machine, but I think we can, yeah, we can just right click these. So if they do act as a source, maybe if, eventually there'll be a recipe added. <laughs> I don't know where you can put them inside of a machine of some sort because it doesn't really show any sort of machine filling it with water. Kind of unfortunate. So at the moment, these will get turned into small coolant cells so we can convert all of these. Oh, and it's going to require us to manually place it. You know, why do I feel like this was a thing I remember doing even back? Oh, man, back in the day. Like, I remember doing this. Okay, so if I put all of them in there, then it allows me to pull them all out. Wow, that makes it a lot easier. Okay, <laughs> instead of doing one after another. Oh, wait, does it? Hold on, these are fluid cells. Yeah, these are just empty fluid cells. Oh good, I can reuse them. Ah, okay, let's say, so perfect. I have all the small coolant right here. And uh, yeah, to make an overclocker, I am going to have to do this and then Bam, an overclocker upgrade. Now, um, I don't know how many of these can fit in here, but I'm kind of afraid that I'm gonna blow this up. Um, and I don't think I have like protection on here. So put this in here. And I know by default, this is pulling two, um, but is there a way that I can like look and be able to read what kind of power these machines are using? I don't see anything that gives me that sort of indication. Just another, another problem. Um, so yeah, like I would need something here. There's a fuse. Like it's going faster, but I don't know how many overclockers I can put in here before this machine just will stop working. So apparently it's going to be four. It's going to be four with this current power. Um, and this one generator is basically powering this connected to this. Um, if I add one more to this, power starts to diminish. So four is all I can have. Um, and, but if I put one in here, that's probably also going to start draining power. Yeah. So it's going to be kind of a split. Like at the moment, all we can really do is two and two. Uh, I did notice though, this ex ejector upgrade is also ejecting nickel over into the bottom part of the thermal generator for whatever reason, because this is full. So not a good thing, not a good thing. I'm definitely gonna have to move these machines into their own sort of place. So let's have a little bit of fun and let's do some testing because I'm, I'm kind of unfamiliar with how this is going to work. I have another geothermal and uh, here's, a little, here's a little thing that's gonna go on. So right here, these LV cables, they only support 32. Um, and so I'm gonna exceed that and kind of test and see what happens. I, I don't exactly know what to expect other than the possibility of them either just breaking or fizzling out. All right, let's put this there. And with both of these, they should export that amount. Maybe let's send it to a powered furnace. And okay, they do not fizzle out. So this just must mean that uh, they're not going to burn up or anything, which is kind of good. It just means that they do have that power cap. Okay, so it's just a power cap. Man, why? You can tell. I'm like, I'm so nervous with this mod because I've had, I've been jump scared too many times by it in the past. So with this, I'm thinking about upgrading our power cables and uh, using the transformer upgrades. And I want to test and see if we can't get more power 
into this one machine. Um, so we do have the Furnator. Let's go ahead and just use the Macerator for right now. So it's it's set up right here. We'll go ahead and uh, put a transformer upgrade in it, and let's see if this can uh, this can still function. Uh, we're gonna have to use the MV cables, which is the next tier up, a little bit thicker cables, uh, but that's gonna feed it with the power it needs, and then we know it can take four without losing power. But now, can we do more without it draining power? Okay, so it can do about three, three more before it starts losing out on power. But the transformer upgrade, I believe, now allows it to accept more power. That's perfect. That's exactly what I want. I want to get this thing nearly max upgrades. So, technically, if it goes up one more, it'll be in the higher voltage, the even higher voltage. Um, if we put two transformers upgrades in here... And so that would mean we should be able to put even more overclocker upgrades in this. So I kind of have an idea here. I think this uh, this could work. Um, so on each side, I'm going to use four, even though these cables can definitely accept uh, up to six uh, of these uh, ge uh, geothermal generators. So if I do four of them, sort of in a line like this, I can do four on this side and four on the other side. That might be enough just for right now to sort of get things going where I have these four powering this one macerator and the other one powering the electric furnace uh, to cook everything. And yes, I could use other mods for this, but I'm just sort of testing things out, testing the waters with this particular mod. So let's get this all plugged in. And for this, I'm just going to do this little maneuver <laughs> and then spin that to get that piped in. And then same on this side. So now we have lava going into this, which is really nice, and we can use the MV cables to connect all these together. And I just need to make some more MV. Let's take a look. FTB. And then grab some more of these MV cables, uh, which should be perfect. Okay. So this should work and allow me to use more overclocker upgrades. So to kind of put this to the test, um, throw this in here. Before this starts to deplete on power, we should be able to get, yeah, perfect set here. So that is actually working perfectly. And that's that's pretty quick. I know that taking it the next level is incredibly fast. But you gotta admit, that's that's gonna be pretty quick. And then when we hook this up on the other side, um, I'm, on, I'm gonna use... Um, Kind of a buffer here. I'm going to use another mod to kind of buffer between because I, I don't I still don't want these uh, connected to each other because it does. It, it just seems like it's going to end up causing some problems, maybe. Uh, but if I put the transformer upgrades in here and then I put some overclockers, these should be pretty good at smelting items. So I have just about everything set up. I have the laser IO that is running the items from here over to here. All the overclockers are ready to go. Now I need two separate things hooked up. I need an importer, and uh, I need some way to export out of here. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to need an importer to import into the system, and then I need some sort of way of exporting. And I'm thinking an ME interface is going to be exactly what I need to export the items down here. That should work. I, I, I know, I, I do need an axe at some point. Um, so let's pop down here. I think that the interface is what I need. This will allow me to set items here that'll always keep this filled, but I don't know if it's going to automatically try to put the items into this system. Um, so let's go ahead and get this hooked up first, because I might have to try something else if this does not work. And then, of course, this will need to be hooked up here. And then, yeah, I've got to get everything from this cable routed all the way over here. So I guess we can see if this works. Let's try raw silver and if we put that here that's going to always have some raw silver um keep them out in stock but is that going to put the items in it is not um so this will keep something stocked it'll keep this stocked but it doesn't send the items so i think i'm gonna have to go with something else here we're probably gonna have to use a regular exporter and i think I think this mod requires you to have upgrades for it. That is definitely the case. I am going to need capacity cards. And thankfully, we only need two of these. 
Um, it looks like two go into the machine. So let's go ahead and try this out. Let's go ahead and pop down here. And this time I'm going to use a export bus because we're exporting out of the system. It looks like this. And then hook the cable to it. There we go. Uh, now, by default, it only has one slot, but it is going to have nine once we put the upgrades in there. There we go. Two full upgrades. And we have only nine slots, um, which is kind of a problem because I might have to wrap this around and also place it on the top to be able to get all of our different items because we do have several here, as you can see. And I don't actually know if all of them can be ground up in this as well. I didn't actually look. Um... But I, I was just kind of hoping at that point. Now, the import bus uh, should be fine on its own, as it is just going to import said items. And it is powered. And there we go. And I think that's it, other than maybe, like, needing speed upgrades. Um, so, let's go ahead and start off with, uh, I guess, iron, since that's probably the thing we have the most of. Like, 4,000 iron. Um, and I can go ahead and put that in that first slot. And that should get the ball rolling. All right, so is that going to send iron? Of course it's not. Or is it? Is it doing it? Yes, it is doing it. Okay. And then it's sending it over here. And then that's getting pulled out. Perfect. And we are doubling. It does look like this, however, needs um, some speed upgrades. And uh, that is going to be its own thing. Like, let's see. I actually can craft those. So there we go, we can make some acceleration cards, and that should speed up the, uh, the, how quick these items get pulled out. And there we go. That should be running smoothly. Look at that. It's keeping up just fine. It is, uh, going as fast as this could possibly go. And spitting out all of the iron into our main storage. So, uh, I think what I actually need to do is maybe extend another storage section? That is very similar to this one. Where could I put this? Could I maybe put it in this room just higher up? Hmm. I would like to have an area where all this is going into drawers, like all of the main iron and stuff. Hmm. I think this is going to be the perfect place to place all this right here in the wall. And uh, let's see. I need to link this up just like so. Perfect. Um, now, I'm going to need to lock this and definitely want iron to be one of the first things that, that go into these drawers. So we go ahead and throw iron here. But of course, I need to make more drawers and get this set up like this. So all I have to do now is get all the cables hooked in. So here we go. I know this is the, uh, the best part of the entire video is watching the satisfying cable get ran. All right, so all the way over here, I'm going to be hooking in another ME storage bus. In this storage bus, I definitely need to make sure this is a high priority. I'm going to go ahead and set it to three. And boop. And we should be good. So now we should start to see iron entering this instead of our main storage. And that's why I'm setting up all these drawers. is so I don't have to have as much reliability or, or I don't have to have, rely as much on these drives. I can keep everything nice and organized in these uh, these drawers. And this, this really helps out for a lot of reasons. One, I can have items infinitely be generated and void them. And I can also have large, large quantities of items being stored inside all these drawers as well. So things are starting to look pretty industrial down here. I'm actually really enjoying this. As you can see, we got just about everything going. Now, this is far from the best way to do this. Like, I, I will completely agree. This is not the best way to go about doing this. Uh, but I did want to get into this mod, and we're going to have to get into it eventually anyways, even more than what we did today. Um, because this is going to be required for in-game. Yeah, we're going to have to do some crazy stuff with this mod. I've got a lot of learning to do. Now, before we end today's episode, I do want to get into upgrading our signs for our supporters. I think this is going to be a great place to do it, is on this back wall here. Um, and to do that, I'm going to need text screen modules. And I am going to need a screen controller. Um, so the screen controller receives power. And then we just utilize some of these screens. Very, very simple to make, by the way. We just utilize the screens. And we take these. And we we can uh, place down the screen controller. And then place the screens. And I think you can refresh. I'm also going to need a point. 
Um, and I mean, we can kind of hide this thinking maybe down here. Yeah, this actually should be a pretty good place. Take this, make sure to set this to the main network, place the screen controller that should hook up and then we'll place the screens. For example, right here could be one screen. So long as it's not placed upside down, this can be one screen and this one and this one. And then we can have another one over here. Just like that for right now. And then all I have to do is scan. And these are basically ready to go. The only thing I'm going to need is some screen modules um, or some text modules. These right here, also pretty easy to make. And I place that inside. And then inside here, I can modify some text by saying like, thanks to, and uh, let's see, make this large, make it bright and change the color to a white color. And then it says, thanks to up there. Um, now to make this a little bit better, I can also put a, I can put a text module above that and that should lower it a little bit. You can see it's now dir not directly in the top. And I could probably even center this, make it even better. I think I'm just going to go with things, make it centered. Ah, and that's even better. And then what's awesome is I can now add names. So just like that, make sure to change this to a white color. And I'm not going to make this large. This will stay small, but you can see right there, or I can center the name, which is probably going to be better. And there we go. We'll have a list of beautiful names here. Now I can change these and make them completely transparent, which is what I want to do. And uh, you can see they kind of just hang right here, which is awesome. I love this. Now, of course, with that, I think it's time to thank the sponsor of today's video. And my friends, it's going to be a huge thanks to Smokey RL. Thank you so much for your amazing support. By the way, over on the Discord, becoming a Discord premium member. And of course, guys, if you're interested in joining this amazing community over on the Discord, go to discord.gg forward slash chosen architect and join the over 25,000 members over there. Oh man, I'd really appreciate it. Also, click that subscribe button if you enjoyed today's video. Comment something awesome down below. I'd love to see it and read it. And uh, you might get a nice little heart from old chosen architect here. Guys, I thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching. Thank you.